Hi, welcome to this video in which we will discuss a popular character from DC Comics, The Flash, his high speed and its link with time travel. On this channel Synergy Files, we aim to inspire budding engineers and technicians for a better, more sustainable world, so please do subscribe to our channel. Most of us know that Barry Allen or The Flash can tap into Speed Force, a supposedly scientific concept that has been created in the comics. This allows him not only to gain extremely high speeds, but also the ability to time travel and to alter reality. The Flash is not alone in using the Speed Force. There are many other characters in the comic universe that can attain extremely high speeds to a level that is comparable to the speed of light. So much so that they have the capability of disrupting the space-time continuum. However, many a times concepts are shown in the comics that are totally against the science of time travel that we know about today. For example, in the 1978 movie Superman starring Christopher Reeve, it was shown that Superman reverses time by accelerating around the Earth. So in this video, we will try to explain in simple words what we actually know about time travel and what has been scientifically recorded and measured. Let's unpack the concepts of time travel, but first we must park aside the false ideas that we may have picked up from movies, in particular the concept of time travel as shown in the movie Back to the Future. It is now established scientific truth that time marches forward and it only moves in one direction, that is from present to the future. Time cannot go backwards, that is, it cannot go from present to the past. The speed of time marching forward, however, is subjective and can change, meaning Time can either move slower or faster with respect to a certain object, but it will only move in one direction, again present to future. The term used for speeding up or slowing down of time from a reference point is termed as the time dilation. Now that we have clarified some of the ambiguity, let's explore further how time can march forward slower or faster with reference to an object. The marching speed of time depends upon two things. First is the velocity of the object and second is the gravitational force faced by the object. The scientific terms of kinematic time dilation and gravitational time dilation respectively are used to describe them. So let's have a look at them individually. What is kinematic time dilation? Well, it is simply the fact that the faster an object travels, the lesser time it experiences. The late Carl Sagan's television series Cosmos in the 1980s popularized the term twin paradox. Before that, this term was only known in the scientific community. The twin paradox is a thought experiment that evoked much pondering among the scientific elite at the start of the 20th century. In line with the interest in space exploration, the concept exploded into mainstream consciousness in the late 70s. The twin paradox assumes two identical twins who are the subject of an experiment. The objective is to measure the passage of time as one of the twins sits on a park bench while the other travels in a spacecraft around the Earth at light speed. When the twins eventually meet up after the traveling twin has completed several million laps of the planet, it will be noted that the stationary twin would have aged a lot. On the other hand, the traveling twin would have experienced a lot less time and therefore would have aged less. So to reiterate, the faster an object travels, the lesser time it experiences. Now let's look at gravitational time dilation. The closer an object is to the center of a gravitational field, the slower its march forward in time. Consequently, the further away an object is from the center of gravitational field, the more time it experiences compared to an object that is close to the center. For example, a person living at the top of a skyscraper would have clocked more seconds of life than someone living at the bottom floor. This effect is minuscule but grows with increasing distances. This is not just something we know from theory but it is something measurable in real life. For instance, an orbital satellite experiences an extra 38 microseconds each day compared to an object 
on the surface of the earth. The clock on the satellite therefore has to be readjusted at fixed intervals to synchronize with the clocks on our planet. The accuracy of GPS satellites that orbit above 20,000 kilometers will be hampered if this adjustment factor was not taken into consideration. Gravitational time dilation has been confirmed through many tests of general relativity. Two of the more renowned experiments are the pound Repka experiment and gravity probe A. Likewise, kinematic time dilation has also been confirmed through a very famous experiment. In a test conducted in 1971 that was dubbed as the Hafeld Keating experiment, it was confirmed that a gain in time was observed by the clocks that moved fast towards east. The reference frame assumed a stationary center of the earth. Slightly lesser gains were observed for objects moving at high speeds towards the west and this was due to the eastward rotation of the Earth. These experiments were carried out using commercial airliners with extremely precise atomic clocks on board. The difference of time between the clocks would have been more pronounced if the speed of the aircraft was higher. So now we have learned how time dilation actually works. In the comics, the character of Flash has been described to perceive an attosecond. An attosecond, by the way, is 1 into 10 to the power minus 18th of a second. Just for context, an attosecond is to a second what a second is to about 31.71 billion years. This means that Flash can see a ray of light going past him in super slow motion. Now this is a bit far-fetched, but at least it is in line with the theme of time dilation, which is Things that are moving fast experience less time, or in other words, the marching of time slows down for them. As for explaining how lightning is created while Flash moves, one of the explanations would be that Flash's costume ionizes the air around him and his quick movement helps to connect the pockets of charged particles in the ambient air which produces the lightning. Now you are free to comment in the section below about how you think the lightning is caused. So we hope you would have enjoyed this video and learned from it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up. We aim to produce many such videos in the future too. If you don't want to miss out on them, then subscribe to the channel. Lastly, on this channel Synergy Files, there are already videos on engineering of Iron Man's suit, discussion on Spider-Man's web, Batman's hover vehicle, and Superman's flight characteristic. If you're a student of science who's into comic books, you'll find some really useful information, so do check out these videos. This channel also brings you information on renewable energy and sustainability. There are over a hundred videos on those topics, so check them out too. Once again, thank you for your time and attention.